Alright guys, time to look at another Infinity Bat rep. This time it'll be between Morats and NCA. So it's going to be Kornak, the big captain himself, with the Suryat link. Five-man core, Kornak, Raktorak, Suryats against Neoterra. And they're going to be running Bolts. And you guys know what I feel about Bolts. So Bolts, a bit of a malign sort of unit choice. We're going to see how it turns out. It's going to be... Combine army with Morats against Panoshiana with NCA. It's going to be Com Center. So let's have a look at the bat rep. We've got quite a lot to talk about today. Recently, I also put, I also put it put together some um, uh, some extra terrain. Some uh, I lost it here. Hang on, computer's playing wrong. I put together some extra terrain from Battle Kiwi. Uh, this is a guy in New Zealand who makes MDF terrain. And uh, it took me quite a while to assemble these trucks, but I quite like them as line of uh, sight terrain because he's designed them in such a way that the under part of the trucks here is uh, obs obscured. So you can't really see under the terrain here, but you can also take the crates off and place them elsewhere on the table. So it's kind of modular. I quite like that. Uh, anyway, here's the table, so I'm just going to pick the right color. color. So Com Center is all about capturing the objectives, you've got nine of them, arranged in this sort of similar layout as Tic-Tac-Toe, but the idea here is to have more of the captured console than your opponent. By the end of the game there's an exclusion zone, so it's harder to put out infiltrating troops to capture the objectives. The thing is that you're also having to worry about uh, specialists because if you lose more specialists and your opponent kills more specialists than you, then they get two objective points from that. You can get one objective point for killing the designated target, which is your opponent's HVT and your HVT turned into killable targets. And you get a further two if you do that with your data tracker. The thing that makes this, in this mission really interesting for me is that if you kill... The enemy HVT with your data tracker and kill more specialists, you get five points. And if they get more consoles than you, they get four points. And if you're tied on classifieds beyond that, then you win just for completing that. But the the consoles are a more reliable way to do it because if you get the enemy uh, HVT designated target with your data tracker and the specialists, but they get all the consoles and they also kill your designated target, even without their data tracker, and they get their classified, it starts getting a bit um, bit awkward. So I really like this infinite, this mission because it's a real epitome of, of affinity kind of thing. There's more than one way to win. There's lots to do. You have to, kill ver you have to keep various win conditions in mind at all times. So uh, let's have a look at the lists. Let's have a look at the game. I'm running uh, the Cat and Kornak strike team. And this is a list that I've run once once before. I ran it against Aleph, managed to win. We're going to have another go at it. Now, I thought that my opponent was going to be playing Hakaslam when I showed up to his house to play the game. I thought, surely he's going to be playing Hakaslam. He plays Hakaslam a lot at the moment, but he went for NCA. So we're going to have a look at how it does. This is a list with Bit and Kiss. Really good unit to use in any combined army, sectorial or vanilla. The obvious Dr. Worm, you always take that guy. More at Hacker, just because we want to use him as a specialist, but also buff the Q-Drone with Assist Fire. Q-Drone has HMG. But the main focus of the list is the link with Kornak, Mark 12, Lieutenant, Stratagos. It gives that extra order, so you've got 11 orders to do the Alpha Strike with. The Raktorak Vulcan Shotgun Specialist Operative is the only specialist in that link. So yet with Multi-Rifle, provides the shock ammunition, provides that short range, 16, sorry, 8 to 16 range, Effectiveness in the link team. Heavy rock launcher provides the arrow piece, provides the area damage at long range. The HMG provides the first turn sort of attacking active reaction. Five dice, ballistic school, 16, an active turn. And the Z-Rat, we've got just enough points for a 22-point model which can infiltrate and has uh, a specialist ability. So let's see how we go. Interestingly enough, my opponent wins the tenant role, the initiative role, and decides to take the second turn right off the bat. Now, 
you guys have seen a lot of my bet reps, you know that I go second a lot. Taking second turn is a really good idea because it means you have last turn, which means you can flip back the objectives to your side and go last. But the I irony here is that I'm playing a list which wants to punch you in the face right from the start. I want to take first turn. So had I won the lieutenant's roll, I would have been going straight for first turn. For my So my opponent going straight for second turn means that not only, not only do I get first turn, but I get to set up second as well. So it was kind of like a gift to me. When we talked about it after the game, my opponent said that he sort of briefly forgot which list he was playing because he was thinking of playing one of several lists. So a, a, a bit of a mistake there from him. Um, but I can sort of see why you would do it, even though he's playing the list that he is playing. As you guys will see from the bat rep later on, he's playing Neo Terra. He's got uh, a Bulleteer, and he will also have a Garuda. Those are his two attacking pieces. He's got Assisted Fire available to him. But his list is more on the defensive, defensive side. Uh, Bolts in general, I think, are better at defending than attacking. So attacking second turn, second turn still isn't that bad. Here's a look at the uh, Mike, uh, so not Mike Rats, <laughs> I said Mike Rats, Battle Kiwi trucks here, MDF trucks, which I've recently assembled, which are looking really, really good. Great terrain piece. You can sort of uh, modulate them so you've got a sort of a um, solid vertical line partway through the table, but then it sort of uh, bends across this way. And you can have a model situated here, which is generally in total cover until the enemies come this side of the terrain to start shooting at you. So I like I like this uh, this piece of terrain just in general for its usability, for its versatility. Setting up a second here. This is after my opponent is deployed. So we're going to be putting the HMG in the top here, Doctor Worm prone as well, um, and the rest of the link team on bottom ground. Now the main thing I'm worried about during this game is the Swiss. Uh, Swiss Guard with Missile Launcher. If he does have one of those, then I'm kind of screwed. It means that if I move out, he just waits for the optimal time to shoot. And if he picks up uh, a situation where he can clip two or three guys, possibly hitting on an 18, um, then it's probably going to be game over. So the best I can do is just um, presume that he has one and move out in such a way that I can actually keep my link team fairly spread apart. The plan here in this game is to actually uh, move out with the HMG first, attack his bolts, you know, from d a distance, then move across the, the railing of the HMG. The lower link team will move out slowly in such a way that they will keep themselves spread far apart. I believe that zone of control for link teams is like a cylinder. So if you've got one model up here and another one on ground level, but still within eight inches of the like horizontal zone of control, then you're still okay for coherency. Correct me, guys, if I'm wrong about that. I might be wrong. But that's the thing behind it. If the HMG gets destroyed uh, by, an eight, by a missile launcher or a sniper rifle or something, I'm hoping that my Dr. Worm can sort of slither over there in um, you know prone capacity and revive him and give me, other, give me another go at it. Got Bitten Kiss on the left-hand flank. On the middle of the board, a Vanguard hacker, as we saw. You guys had a look at the list already. Uh, the HVTs in the distance there, you can see the Zerat. There's an exclusion zone, so she can't go too far up the board, so staying generally towards my uh, deployment zone. My opponent, let's have a look at it. He doesn't actually own the Bolt's models, so he's going to be using uh, Kaplan's from Hakaslam to represent them. So this guy here is a Bolt with a Spitfire. Good for mid-range, Blister Skill 16. You know, if you're going to be pushing up the board, Spitfire, not bad. This is just a regular bolt combi rifle. You've got the auxilia team here with um, the orc spot. There's a doctor up here, of course, to help revive the bolt with um, sniper rifle. We've got a uh, an actual lieutenant model here. This, is, I believe, is the lieutenant fusilier. And then we've got another bolt here and another bolt here. So one, two, three, four, five bolts. So this is his general sort of hangout position on his right flank. Note that that, uh, miss, that sniper rifle is covering where my uh, Morat link team is. Elsewhere along the board, he, you, so you can see that position we just sort of um, discussed over there. Note that the Morat link team is in... Um, whoops. 
more at length him is this in this direction here. Bulletier with Spitfire, of course, one of the probably the best profile in Pan Oceania period. Sensebot, typically you want to take one of those if you're playing Pano. Uh, further to the left hand flank, he's got a, a decoy lieutenant, uh, Warcore. He's got an auxilia here, which is attached to a bot here, and there's a CSU in this location here. So this is his left hand flank facing towards my side of the field. I've got my Morats over here. You guys can sort of see that there. And uh, the rest of my troop is around this position. So we're going to get ready to have a fight. Oh, and his HVT is in that location up there. Mine is uh, right here. Okay, we're going to have to be careful about it. My uh, reserve model is a um, Q drone. Uh, carefully, the Q drone is gaining line of sight right along the midfield here. And it's able to see through all three of the middle objectives, which could be handy if he decides to move out there and take them later on. It also has a sparing line of sight along the right-hand flank and covers the, the back line here in case of any sort of droppage airborne deployment troopers. Um, my opponent here uh, reacting with the bolt the sniper rifle. It's going to be up against a Morat Suryat with HMG from that position shooting over here. And we check the silhouettes, and the Morat has to come up a little bit to get line of sight, does get line of sight to the, the bolt with the sniper rifle, but also gets line of sight of the Doctor, which he wasn't expecting. He was, he was keeping the Doctor out of uh, range so that if the, if the rocket launcher was the one to attack, that the Doctor wouldn't be clipped. But the Doctor is further over in on top of the building here, so if you look, I mean, it was further over here. I point towards it. The Doctor is out of range of a template, but in range uh, beyond the uh, total cover provided by this billboard here. So the Suryat with HMG puts one shot against the Doctor and the four remaining shots against the Bolt. And the result is the Doctor being destroyed by the single shot and the Bolt also being destroyed. So this could have gone badly. But that's why the Doctor's there. If the Bolt gets a crit and somehow manages to get two wounds on the Surya despite armor 7, or like uh, at least 6 or 7 as the case may be, the Surya is just prone there, uh, unconscious, and the Doctor just crawls around the side, revives him, then we have another go at it, the game continues. Okay, so very carefully, now moving the uh, Suryat with HMG across along to the walkway. Uh, this is just a tin bot, by the way, just a, a marker. Um, the heavy rocket launcher moving forward and Kornak, uh, Kornak uh, moving just a little bit further behind him. I'm just worried that if there's some random uh, Swiss Guard missile launcher firing through here, blows up the uh, heavy rocket launcher, if that's the only model I lose then it might be possible to attack him with the HMG and pull the game back. I'm sort of expecting to lose the game at this point, considering that I, I actually figured that he should probably have a Swiss Guard missile launcher. I just want to pause the game for a second, and if we take a look at Infinity Army, uh, I realized after the game that I really shouldn't have been too worried about, um, how should I put it, uh, the Swiss Guard missile launcher. Sorry, my internet's actually playing up at the moment, so... We won't look at Army 6, but the point that I was trying to make is that um, if you look at the fact that he's got a Bolt Spitfire and a Bolt Sniper Rifle, and he's got a, spit, a Spitfire on the Bulleteer, and he's got a Bolt Hacker, he actually doesn't quite have enough SWCs left for a Swiss Guard missile launcher. So I had enough information to deduce that I'm not going to get missiled, but... Um, Having not played bolts very much, I just wasn't that familiar with their costs to fully be comfortable with it. So continuing to move out, just carefully moving across here with the HMG, moving up here with the uh, rocket launcher, Kornak, uh, Kornak moving forward, Rakdarak finally coming behind the red boxes, the, uh, the multi-rifle guy just spreading out. Again, just paranoid here, just assuming I'm going to get hit by some sort of missile launcher because that's the, that's the key to losing here. Eventually, getting to a point here with the HMG where I can sort of start moving to this sort of territory where I'll get in range of his designated target. Now, Kornak is the data tracker, so to get maximum points, Kornak will have to be the one to do it. 
but I'm on a timer. I've got 11 orders, which is a lot, but uh, spending orders on a heavy infantry link, link also costs a lot. So I'm happy to just kill his designated target with the HMG to pick up that free point and continue on with the game. The uh, HVT is here, but the uh, multi-rifle guy is moving generally in this direction because I can still maintain, maintain coherency if the other three guys move around this side of the building and the multi-rifle moves around that side of the building. That's generally the plan of it. So Kornak just carefully going prone, creeping forward, rack to rack, creeping forward, trying to minimize the line of sight of any hidden deployment models that can get to me. Over in the corner, the uh, HMG Suryat is able to uh, take out the designated target at the Warcourt. The first phase for all was complete fluffed roll. Didn't get any damage on the Warcourt or the designated target. Neither did they get anything on the Suryat. But the second attempt, with the continued movement from the Link team, does eliminate the designated target and the Warcourt. So we are making some progress. Bit of a blurry photo, but Kornak and his friendly eight, um, heavy rocket launcher just going prone in behind the planters here, getting ready for that push. Once the enemy models have been cleared, we can get that heavy rocket launcher into that ideal situation where he can actually blow some really serious shit up. And here it comes. So he does not have a Swiss Guard with a missile launcher. He's got a Hexa Sniper, as you can see here. And realizing the scenario requires the destruction of specialist troops, and knowing that he can deplete my link, has a go at the rack to rack with a heavy shotgun who's out in the middle here. So first shot skill, Morats move out, and the arrow is the hidden Hexa Sniper shooting at the uh, rack to rack with the Vulcan shotgun. And the entire link team has to dodge. Unfortunately, the link leader was a HMG uh, Suryat, which was positioned sort of partway down the stairs without line of sight to the uh, Hexa. And uh, moving down the stairs comes down to a position around about here, but doesn't actually have line of sight to the Hexa at any point during the first short skill declared by the Morats. So the ARO is against a member of the link team, just pew, right against the rack rack here. And the three other members, we've got the, um, you know, Kornak, Heavy Rock Launcher, and multi-rifle out here, all they can do is just really dodge. So the plan is just to dodge with the entire link team. Dodge is the best call, just because you've got six cents you can avoid. Um, well, surprise shot doesn't really matter here, so six cents isn't really relevant. But the rack to rack is like physical 12. The hex is needing a 15 on one dice. So if I just roll a random like 7, 8, 9, or 10, or some sort of uh, medium roll, and he rolls a very low number and hits, I can still get out of jail here. And then I can use the second order to actually contest the Hexa. So luckily, and this is the game going my, my way so far, the Hexa uh, actually misses. 25% chance to miss, still misses. The Rack to Rack gets out of jail free here. So I was in trouble, I got off the hook. So the Link team now moving down. And you can sort of see the positioning. Uh, HMG Suryat moving down the stairs. Into range, into line of sight of the Suryat. Rack to Rack jumping, get down! behind the objective, going prone. Uh, heavy, ro lock heavy rocket launcher going up next to cover, uh, getting into position there. Uh, Kornak coming behind to have cover as well, and the multi-rifle moving forward from this position. It's Kornak who's going to be going up against the, um, the Hexa, because he's in range. He's got the bless best ballistic skill of all of them, and he's um, you know in optimal range band. He's going to be able to possibly guts behind cover if he... Passes a religious check, and if he fails the fails the face to face roll, so Kornak going for it, hitting the hexer with four dice, and the hexer loses the face to face roll, but passes the armor save because he only takes one single hit and goes prone. So you can see him here behind cover. So he still has his hexer, but luckily my link team won't be having to contend with that hidden deployment model. And now that he's revealed that many SWCs, I kind of know that he does not have a Swiss Guard missile launcher. Thank God. All right, continuing to move in. Rack to rack moving in. Uh, HMG, multi-rifle, Kornak behind the cover, and we're bringing in the big gun, the heavy rocket launcher. And the idea here is to actually try and slice a along here where he, because he's got actually a, um, a bolt there. If he slices along here, then the heavy rocket launcher might be able to pick up an explosion 
which causes a template which is going to cover this. And that, my friends, is a template which also hits his bolt spitfire because he's got a bolt spitfire handing up here, standing up here, which is not in line of sight of the Soyet yet. So Soyet brutally coming in with the heavy rocket launcher easily beats the, the, the bolt, which is effectively a four-team, four-man link bolt at this point with combo rifle and lands the template on him. Yeah! And blasts the bolt, blasts the Spitfire. We're leaving two bolts left in the link team. Bolts! What bolts? There's only two of them left. It's blown up by the Morats. Things going well. So, um, heavy, ro lock heavy rocket launcher continuing around here. And now gaming, gaining a line of sight through this point here. So this is going to allow us to land a, another explosion on that uh, Auxilia bots remote. But that's not the Auxilia right here. That's a CSU. So this uh, heavy rock, rocket launcher guy is going to be able to explode both the bot and the CSU, which is going to allow Kornak to move around without getting hit by a flamethrower. That's actually quite important. So um, the... Dream Team, the Kornak squad moving through behind the truck, uh, setting up position. We're going to be able to take this objective with the rack to rack later if he survives. Multi rifle, so yeah, just moving in. Heavy rock, heavy rock launcher taking out the side. Kornak moving out the side, and um, with the last order, eleven orders in this turn. Kornak drawing a line of fire to the uh, bulleteer, which has no assist to fire, no cover. So Kornak starts at fourteen. Plus three for the link, plus three for range, minus six for there being, you know, ODD there. So hitting on like 14s on four dice with the bullet here shooting back on a 12 with one dice. And uh, actually, Kornak whiffs his rolls, just whiffs them, doesn't get any hits. Uh, and the bullet here strikes him once, but Kornak, thanks to armor three and cover, just Barely rolls the dice roll. I think he rolled an eight. Eight plus six is fourteen. Or he rolled a nine or something. He rolled he rolled a number quite close to failing, but he did pass the the armor save, and um, doesn't have to actually have to pass the guts check because he uh, moves around here first with part of the short skill, so two inches there, and then pulls back. So uh, that's quite important when you're religious. And you need to move forward, move back, so you don't end the turn in line of sight of them. So he still has the bullet here. He still has the hexer. The uh, link team is set up deep in enemy lines, but we've got the rocket launcher just hanging out here. Uh, just drawing line of sight to that side of the table. Kornak drawing a line, drawing a line of sight around here. We've got a, um, a multi-rifle guy here and the HMG and rack to rack hanging around here. And this is just a um, really just a, a, a tin bot. My opponent uh, using assisted fire from the hacker from the Neo Terra bolts, not the hacker. Hacker from the Nero Terra Bolts, I can't remember. Uh, putting a sister fire on the bullet here. Moves around to take on the heavy rock launcher. The first attempt wins, but the heavy rock launcher tanks the armor saves the armor seven effectively, but fails his religious check, so he's gonna stay there. The second shot wins as well, strips a wound off him, but uh, this time the uh, heavy rock launcher is able to fail the guts and pull back behind cover having taken a wound, so an optimal situation. Now, he's able to move out with his Hexa Sniper and actually target our guy on the left, the multi-rifle guy, because part of his base is exposed around the side of the uh, objective here. So the Hexa Sniper gonna be able to move in and try and go for that. You can see here the positioning, Hexa Sniper, and you know the photo doesn't show up very well, but there's a, just part of a silhouette through there was able to actually clip me with the lighter side of the sniper. Gets through, hits me, managing to pull back behind cover with the multi-rifle as well without losing the multi-rifle. So yeah, so he just pulls back behind the cover, able to avoid the deadly sniper, which has got line of sight through there. Here's how we're looking. So he doesn't have many orders in this turn because he's lost a lot of orders against the, uh, the Morat push. So we've got the bullet here and suppression fire generally looking around this direction. The Hexa Sniper is alive. Uh, more rats are fine. We've got one, two, three, four, five in the Soyak core link still ready to go. 
Bit and Kiss moving up. It's combined turn two, more at turn two. Bit and Kiss moving forward. There's no more hidden deployment. They're just rolling on forward. Fine. Uh, after a failed attempt and then another failed attempt, Bit and Kiss managed to press the button. But we've got 11 orders here, so they can spend as many orders as they want to. Then uh, we've got a situation where Bit can actually fire her repeater over here, a pitcher, and actually land with the repeater there. And that's going to enable a hack onto the hacker, which is uh, throughout uh, to the left here, a bolt hacker. Maestro is a very good hacking ability, and Bit and Kiss do manage to kill him. Elsewhere, the Zerat moves forward and actually um, successfully comes through from behind this building here, over to this prone behind the objective here, to pick up a third objective. That's what you have to do in the second turn of this game. If you're playing um, a, an army which is very hard on the Alpha Strike, crippling the enemy auto pool, you still need to pay, spend that second turn actually completing objectives, because then in your final turn you want to be actually killing things and uh, setting up AROs. If you do it any other way, you run into any you run run into any trouble. If you're going to spend the last turn completing objectives, well, that are, that's fewer orders that you have to set up the better arrows and actually remove orders from your opponent. Uh, it's better to spend your second turn completing the objectives. If your opponent spends a turn taking some back off you, then you can retake them and set up that final turn. That's really how to play if you're going first. All right, it is NCA turn two. And we have a auxiliary team coming back around here. The flamethrower moving around through here and the orc spot um, auxilia moving around through to here. Just to attack the repeater. Because if he doesn't do this, um, he's going to get hacked. In fact, this is actually the lieutenant losing the using the lieutenant order for the auxilia attacking the repeater before the auxilia moves, moves down. So sorry, this is the auxilia here. This is the orc spot here. And this guy is the lieutenant. And this is the guy who does the attacking. And he does successfully remove the repeater. Then we have a situation where he can actually spend an order on the Orcs team moving through here. And this is an entire order. The next order is going to be able to move around here and actually start hitting these guys with the flamethrower from the Orc spot and attacking with the Auxilia at this point with the combi rifle through here. Unfortunately for him though, there is actually a rocket launcher from a Surya just like firing straight through that, that alleyway, but not quite high enough to see over the, the truck. Um, the truck base. So the silhouette one orc spot can move past it, but the auxilia can't get through. So at least you can get the flamer in there. So here comes the flamer guy. There he is in the distance. And all I can really do is dodge, catastrophically failing the dodge with bit and with kiss. Bits removed, kisses in unconscious state. Auxilia team successfully there, wiping out a specialist from the combined army more outside. Aha. Now we have not a Crusader because NCA can't take Crusaders. My opponent is going to use this model as a proxy, as a Garuda. And because he spent all of his special weapons on the bolts and the hexa, this is a Garuda with a combi rifle. So here he comes. Fortunately, he's in the back arc of the Zerat. And after fluffing, completely whiffing his first attempt at killing it, the second order does successfully manage to destroy the Zerat. The Zerat, I'm very glad he actually pressed the buttons, and this is one of the reasons why you go out and press buttons in your second turn, because this can happen. Garuda coming in, removing the Zerat from play. So that's the specialist on his side. He's killed Bit and Kiss, two specialists down. He has lost the Hacker and the Doctor, though, so we're kind of even on specialists at this point for this scenario. Now, uh, what he does is he moves carefully through here, and gains line of sight to the HVT. Now the HVT is a designated target. He is not a data tracker, but uh, he can still gain a objective point from this, very important. The Garuda does shoot and kills the designated target situation. Elsewhere, okay, so he realizes that the Rakterak is this specific model right here, as you can see, and there's a very specific line of fire along through here. And if he was to just move just enough so he gets to touch that dotted line there, his Garuda can shoot at long range, like above 16 inches, at my Raktorak, and only the Raktorak. The Raktorak could shoot back, but at long range, with just a Vulcan shotgun. 
So this is a way of not only getting a lead on specialists, but it will deplete my link team so he's only got uh, someone who's working with a four-man link. So this turns out to be the right play. So moves the Garuda up, shoots at the Vulcan Shotgun. Unfortunately for him, the first face for his face roll gets like a hit through, but I pass the armor save um, luckily. Then we realize that to pass a guts check and actually move into total cover, because this objective here is providing some cover, I would have to move in this direction. And the rules are quite explicit that when you fail guts checks, you have to move away from your opponent. And if you look at the angle again, if you look at it and you would draw a bisecting line through here, moving this direction because of the way the truck's facing, like the, the cab of the truck. Oh, oh crap, I'm saving things here. Window 10. Okay. What have I done, guys? What have I done? Let's go back into it. Wow, okay, so I just saved that image by mistake on stream, that's right, on, on recording. The point I was trying to make is that the Ractorac can't move towards the uh, Crusader uh, because uh, the rules say that you can't when you do that with guards checks, and the the fact that he's in a corner means that if he moves either left or right, he's moving towards the point of the attack, technically, so he just can't do that. Anyway... The Garuda does not succeed in killing the Ractorac because he runs out of orders. It's sad, but he does not succeed. Um, his second attempt at shooting the Ractorac results in the Ractorac passing the, uh, gut, uh, the, the dodge check on uh, physical 12. So with uh, Combined Army turn 2, we now move forward with the uh, Q drone. And that targets the Garuda, which you can't see because it's blurred, but he's in the distance. And the, the Q-Drone destroys the uh, Garuda straight away. I uh, felt that like this was the best starting move for my second turn, because even if I don't destroy him with the face-to-face -face roll, it leaves the Q-Drone in line of sight of the, uh, the Garuda. And regardless of whether it's his turn or my turn, I still have an advantage with Total Reaction and Mimicism. All right. Cornax time to shine. Uh, it's time to play, guys. So the Ractorac moving to the objective. Uh, I think he fails his first attempt at pressing the button, but the second attempt does pass, and he does manage to pick up this objective. It's three, four points, actually, four points. Two from Bit, and the third from the Zero, and the fourth from Ractorac. Four control consoles to Morats. Moving through here, we're able to actually take on the Hexa Sniper in the distance with the HMG moving into place. When your Blister Skill 16, you don't really care about Teo Camo. Uh, it's Blister Skill 16 plus minus for cover, minus 6 for Teo Camo, needing 10s against 1 dice on a 12. So uh, the HMG does manage to shred him with 5 dice versus 1. That's more rats. Kornak. Moving into close combat, so the, uh, the Fusilier had Suppress and Fire, all you need to do is move to within 4 inches of your opponent, he has to reset or change face, or uh, dodge, and then after he wastes his arrow, you move around the corner. So it's only effective if you have 6 inch level 1, he does not have that, Kornak moves into close combat, I decide to declare, declare a close combat attack the following order. He reminded me that I shouldn't Berserk because he's got a knife, and if he gets a normal roll, he just trades me for Kornak potentially. So kudos to my, my opponent for helping me out there. So decided not to Berserk, just swung the double action close combat weapon and removed the Fusilier. Then we can bully our way around, and this is great because the guy with the uh, uh, multi-rifle can now just shred the CSU here and then move over to, to attack his sensor bot quite effectively. So the Link team, they're powerful. Start in here for some fun. Uh, Multi-rifle just shredding the uh, the sensor bot here. He doesn't have a Hexa Sniper. He doesn't have a, um, a Link Team with a uh, Sniper Rifle any, uh, anymore. So really just setting up for the win here. So what we want to do is we want to put the Multi-rifle so he's facing this line here. The um, HMG is out in the open here, but he can face along the deployment zone as well as along through this angle here. The rocket launcher can just cover all of these objectives through here, even this objective through here. Uh, Kornak just uh, supporting through the back, and the link team leader just staying in cover. That's the Ractorac. So 
It's going to be really hard for NCA to take back the objectives when you've got that much firepower trained on the objectives. So he moves out with the Bulleteer, tries to have a go at uh, the combined um, Suryat multi-rifle and HMG, but he's up against a five-man heavy infantry link team effectively. Um, this is not actually the positioning of the Bulleteer. He decides to move him like, a bit closer to cover. And there was a bit of a confusion about whether he was targeting the uh, multi-rifle or the HMG, but the Bulleteer effectively whiffed these shots, didn't actually manage to remove any targets, having to split fire, and the returning fire destroyed him. And that left him with um, nothing left that he could actually complete the game with. So Morats, more specialists, more consoles, equal on classifieds, we got neither of them, and equal on designated targets destroyed. So that's another win for the Morats. This is the second win for this particular list. I really like the fact that Kornak covers the range bands. He's got a specialist in his link team with the, the Rack to Rack. He covers close range with his flamethrower, with the Vulcan shotgun from the Rack to Rack. He covers 8 to 16 with the multi-rifle, heavy infantry multi-rifle. Amazing. If you're going between 16 and 32, You've got either the Mark 12 from Kornak with the Superior Ballistical 17 or 16 to 32 Extreme Range with the HMG. Very, very powerful. Such a fun link to use. And the other thing is that they are so good at surviving. They're not, they can't be jammed. They can't be isolated. They are very resilient against hacking because of the deflector from the Timbot. And they're naturally BTS 6 and 9 here and there. So, uh, and Stratagos level 1 allows you that push with 11 orders. So this list is really a fun list to play. If you guys are considering, like, the Kornak Pain Train, really recommend this specific list here. So you've got Bitten Kiss. You really need them for specialist ability and counter-hacking. The Doctor, obviously, you want to be able to remove isolation state, or not, you want to be able to remove immobilization state and, and heal guys when they lose face-to-face -face rolls. The hacker is there to supply the Q-Drone with assist to fire. Q-Drone, very good uh, in general. A Z-Rat, just because we have the points for it. One another, Infiltrating Specialist. But this particular link team is the Bee's Knees. Probably one of the better link teams out there for alpha striking, given the context. Hope you guys enjoy this one, guys. Sorry about my sort of, you know, drunkenness. Have a bit to drink tonight. You guys can tell from my slurred voices. But I still got through it. Still talked about the game. We had a bit of fun. We enjoyed it. See you guys next time.